What's up guys, welcome back to the Game Show Invitational. It's going to be a best of three today between Scary Faces and Basically Unknown. Probably one of the more even matchups that you could find ever, so should be a good one. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by Heflamook for this best of three. How are you doing today, dude? I'm absolutely fine. Actually, I'm looking forward to this match because yesterday... Um, we had basically unknown getting a heavy beating by Vega Squadron. They showed us their pretty much next level. Um, for scary faces, I love the team because they're pretty much like five unknown people that crushed into the tier two scene. Like they easily beat other uh, tier two teams, and I'm just hoping they develop further. We definitely see them in more and more tournaments and also doing quite well there. So um, I actually think this is quite an even match, and therefore it will be exciting. Yeah, they're very like textbook definition of dark horse i think like they used they were around for a very long time or they have Ten been around for a very long time but it hasn't been until recently where they've really started hitting their stride and it was even before the new patch like sometimes with new patches teams just have meteoric rises but no scary face is just chugging along and they're doing slowly and surely a little bit better basically known uh, they have recently lost mind control and that's a pretty big hit. I think that's why we see Shotchlow standing in for them. But that's a pretty good replacement if I do say so <coughs> myself. But we got a draft going on, dude. Chen Undying, one of the, the uh, softer, or the uh, supporty type heroes, is going to be banned out by basically unknown. Scaryface is going to take Dying out team. Magnus and the Io. Yep, I mean, looking at this draft, I mean, the Magnus, well, <laughs> no surprise whatsoever. I already told it. Told Arise in the lobby, don't cry, my friend, you are not getting to play that Magnus. Um, the hero as such is, I don't know, not, not the most popular one, but on Arise, it's a hero that can always surprise, I have to say. He is pretty Dying much one of the best Magnus players, but we get something else that's also not really surprising. Gyrocopter and Beastmaster, something that Radiant is, I don't know, crushing this meta at the moment. It's pretty much the Droll and Jugger now combined at the moment when we see Gyrocopters. So I think, yeah, unless Ice Fox changes something, this is what we're gonna see all the time. Well, I don't know if I'll go. I don't know if I'll go that far. Yeah. Troll is a uh, troll sniper is maybe not quite yet for Gyrocopter. I think we just need a couple more months in the patch before we really find out. But yeah, Gyrocopter, his strength in lane really makes him so that he is a hero that you could very uh, pick up very early and not get punished for it, and then have him slowly scale up in the late game. Very similar to the strengths of Sniper and Troll of the last patch. Beastmaster has uh, also been, you know, slowly but steadily improving in his pick rate. First pick, even, so uh, Scary Faces want that hard lockdown, and up against the Queen of Pain, well, it should be pretty useful. Uh, Beastmaster, Gyrocopter, not that fantastic together, like, they do fine together, but there's no insane synergies there, but just two very strong heroes, lots of single target damage, and for basically unknown, they're gonna grab very Five soft heroes. Yep, I mean, basically unknown, and also other teams, like, I, I see this Queen of Pain happening, and even, Mike, we both were in Malaysia just some days ago. By the way, I'm still super, like, time zone messed up, aka jet lagged, but that's another story. But why are they all drafting the Queen of Pain? I mean, I know mid-hero Queen of Pain, she's always a nuisance to almost any hero out there. Um, she has some nice bursts, especially mid-game. Early Arcanum Scepter means, like, she's hopping from lane to lane and boosting a lot of, like, AOE damage fights. But other than that, I don't know, I see so many Queen of Pains fail at the moment. Maybe it's just me casting the wrong games. I think you are casting the wrong games. I think you might be cursed, yeah. so you should just stop casting games and then there will be no Queen of Pain picks, or they'll all be good. <laughs> That's clearly how it's going to work out, because Queen of Pain, like, I think the fact that she just does a lot of damage, of course, is one thing. If you're going to go for an aggressive strategy like Radiant BU are pick. seemingly going for, then it is going to be a hero that is going to hit her stride very, very early and won't really slow down until the super late stages, and even then she does decently. Uh, it's yep. the also added utility of being able to put her pretty much in any lane. You can't play her as a support. I guess you can, but you don't really want to. But put her in the off lane, put her in the safe lane, it all works eventually for the Queen of Pain, at least, you know, it kind of works. So that flexibility is, I would say, strong enough to make her an early pick and just add the Five overall strength to hero, then it's fine for a first pick. Be you going to grab a Night Stalker now with Scary Faces? Do need more CC to deal with the pop. Yep, actually we get two heroes capable of silencing. Um, first, it was the Scarab Mage being picked up, and uh, I was like, okay, Queen of Pain, there is your... You know, your nemesis pretty much. If the seal is up, Queen of Pain in rage for anything, maybe a CC follow up or the damage gyrocopter by gyrocopter, for example, then she's pretty much screwed. But then again, they, they picked the early Night Stalker, a hero that comes more and more into the meta, especially because he's, he's so fast there 
because the the damage output of his spells, especially nighttime and everything, it's it's just amazing. Like first night, and the night stalkers are just going all over the map. Like it, I don't know. We have like those builds where they go into urn. A bottle, those two items, that's pretty much it. First night, and they just go roam. And I, I definitely like it. I, I definitely like that many teams bring the Night Stalker back. Yeah, of course, the weakness of that is if you're going to be playing the, you know, kind of four position, very light Night Stalker type of build, then uh, if you're going to be trying to gank someone like a Gyrocopter or a Phantom Lancer, well, Gyrocopter will just turn around and rocket barrage you, and then you can't do anything there. Phantom Lancer is going to have Doppelganger to escape, so you need some sort of help and Disruptor, as the secondary support in that situation seconds, isn't really going to be the best hero until he gets that Static Storm, which is, you know, going to be an extremely Five useful tool. But between these two support heroes, for basically unknown, if Night Stalker is played as support, they don't really have that much presence in the lane. Like, Disruptor can poke a little bit with his Thunder Strike, with his right clicks, but they don't really have that much kill potential unless they have all three heroes there. Usually, for a support duo, you would prefer them to have, you know, some high amount of power just between the two of them. Yeah, and a Phantom Lancer coming out, which is... I mean, he's still a nuisance, just like... Pretty much, he's like the old Phantom Lancer with more survivability, less oomph behind the hits, and a lot less split push because less the cancer. illusions don't hold that much. It's basically old Phantom Lancer without the cancer, right? He got chemo. Radiant team. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, the cancer is removed. Um, then again, in the fights, like, if you are at the choke point of the map and then they go for a fight, Phantom Lancer, uh, I don't know, replicating like, like a Morpho, it's... Nope, that's that's not really funny, especially if the fusel plane and everything comes Ten into play, remaining. then that's kind of... Uh. The only difference, of course, bet between him and Gyrocopter is that Five the Gyrocopter comes online way, way earlier, and, mm -hmm. and Phantom Lancer is something where you definitely need to pump a lot of farm into it, and if, if he's getting that farm, that's quite a question, because we have Disruptor, Night Stalker, Sand King, so we have a Silence, we have Stun, Klims, and another Silence in AoE form, the Queen of Pain for Burst, Sand King for Stun, it's like, um, they have actually a nice nice combo even to get him killed even with the double ganger or without the double ganger depends what kind of situation we come into yeah, and right now he doesn't really have that much help from his allies like he'll have occasionally some roars some minor slows but nothing really hard to get the phantom lancer out of that situation like no dazzle or no paralyzing cask that was banned out stuff like that for bu grabbing the sand king is going to shove the night stalker over towards a more farming role which is the place I like to see him in, just because it's more entertaining. You get more farm in the Night Stalker, he gets to do more things. But BU, yeah. they're definitely on a very aggressive path right now. They can make it super aggressive and grab someone like a Brewmaster as their last pick and just try to end the game super early off of their aggression. But you can have all this aggression. If you're not actually going to be pushing towers, you're going to be struggling to end the game in your favor. Lashrak is still in the pool. A lush track. Well, that would be a bit too aggressive. Plus, the core I would want to see is not there. So, remaining. hmm, I'm not that really sure if core. that's 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 actually yeah. Ten but lush track remaining. core. If you have, I don't know, a bunch of squishy besides him, I'm not I'm not really sure if if that's the right approach. Well, I mean, I'm just saying it could be like BU. They could also uh, grab any carry hero right now, you know, just carry hero, generic carry hero X, and just uh, have the Night Stalker Queen of Pain hold down the fort, but it really depends on how aggressive they want to be. With Scary Faces, Ooh. with the Phantom Lancer and the Gyrocopter, now a Nyx Assassin, this is That's a gonna surprise have to some me. flexibility in their lanes, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, I did not see this one coming, I have to say. Uh, another Roam, another Scouter coming out, who is a bit later online than the Night Stalker in comparison, for obvious reasons. He needs the Veneta. Um, we have to actually see who he finds. Like the the most optimal thing is that Nexus Assassin finds a disruptor actually before certain finds break out, or that he really just focuses on him before his ultimate comes out, or the Sand King, uh, preventing that he like comes sandstorming in uh, with the Plank Dagger. This is, I think, the optimal case, and it's also quite nice because, for example, Sand King, he can't really hide in his sandstorm because, mm -hmm. yeah. There's Carapace, etc. You just pop the Carapace, walk right in, and then Sand King is going to be in an awkward situation. Killing off the Disruptors, yep. you said, probably the prime objective, but uh, I think most of the time Nyx Assassin is going to be looking for the Queen of Pain, helped out with the Skyrath Mage. It's going to be a Weaver for Basically Unknown. I haven't seen Weaver in a hell of a long time, dude, and this game seems like an excessively okay seen it in game a pop to be mine Weaver. In 2014 or so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Something like, like, like professional that. Dota... I haven't seen him in, in ages. Well, Weaver, he's really at his best 
when the enemy team has very low CC, low amounts of CC. And for scary faces, that's not necessarily the case. Like, Gyrocopter may or may not have a homing missile. Eknart will eventually have his Ancient Seal. They'll have Roar, they'll have Impale from the Nyx Assassin. It's not going to be the safest game for the Weaver. Even the burst from scary faces is pretty high. By the way, like, is it actually he? What, what's the gender of, of Weaver? Has anyone ever looked between his or her legs? I mean, there are six legs, so... Don't make me read... I could don't be. remember the lore, dude. I just know that Puck has no gender, and everyone else kind of is how they sound. But Weaver is like... You go... You cab out right together. now. You read the lore, and then you come back and tell me if you really are interested no. in that, because I don't care. No, no I, I don't care enough for this one. Well, then we're in agreement. Weaver is going to be genderless from here on out. But guys, this is game one of the best of three between Scary Faces and basically unknown for Scary Faces. They're going to send Quista up towards the top lane for right now as the Phantom Lancer. Eknard's going to be joining him as the Skywrath Mage and Shadowy... Ooh, Support Gyro is going to be joining them as well. State is going to be handling the mid Beastmaster, and that leaves Ramdes on the Nyx Assassin. You see the lane flexibility already from Scary Faces showing its power. Yeah, and Chaklo is going to be in the off, uh, off lane here on the Sand King, already popping his wards right there. One of my favorite players in the, around the tier 2 scene, Arise. Of course, I always want to see him on the Magnus, but this time he's going to be mid on the Queen of Pain. Behind him, there's Nico with a surprise pick. Weaver, pure evil on the Disruptor, and well, I just call him by this name at the moment, like Stomanen uh, on the Night Stalker. That's what Twitch chat told us it was pronounced like that one time, So, and everyone seemed to be in agreement, so... What? What is it? Like, Stominin. what did they say about pronunciation? Stominin. Yeah, Stominin. Yeah. Okay, Stomanin or Stominin, yeah. Yeah, because Like, was... I just read it because it's Cyrillic letters. Yeah, that's but it was me and Grandis, so we're just like, we have no idea oh. what we're looking at right now. Yeah. That's the bad thing when two Americans cast together. <laughs> yeah, two Americans who don't learn these languages. Hell, I don't even know if you could, like, actually learn these languages until you get to college just because no one's offering it anywhere else. And even when you get to college, you probably can't learn these languages easily. You have to go to a really big school. Well, if you, I don't know, if you know Russian in America, you, you might get arrested anyway for being a spy. But there it is. Davai, Davai. Everybody's G, so let's see. As of set versus unknown, it's a best of three. It's going to be a ton of fun because I think they're a pretty similar team in skill. And now let's see if we have some action around the runes. That is, to be honest, something I would like to see. Currently, but the problem is mostly it ends up being a 50-50 rune split. Well, I think the exception could be right here because we have a Weaver on the field. Weaver is great at just sneaking in and grabbing it. So unfortunately, for basically unknown, the Weaver is not going to be in a sneaky position or sneaky enough position to actually grab that. So they'll just let that go. Uh, Shikuchi as an invisibility spell does last for a very short amount of time. So there's really no sense pushing it. It looks like yeah. the basically unknown lanes are going to be juggled up just a little bit. They have gotten a read on the amount of heroes up on the top lane, and it looks like they really want their Sand King to be uh, in that type of dangerous situation. They want their Weaver to get farmed. Yeah, the biggest problem about Weaver, like sneaking that first rune, would really be the cooldown, the 12 seconds on the first level of Weave, so that would be kind of awkward going in, and then, yeah, well, on the way back, you don't have invisibility, and the boar actually slowing you to death. But let's see what's coming here. Like, the Nyx Assassin already under pressure here. We have Stoman plus Pure Evil coming in. There was actually no Void casted on him, but... Still, the harassment is real. Trying to stay in lane and grab some experience is going to be hard. Well, so that similar situation is going to be happening in the mid lane. It's a lot shorter of a lane than the bottom lane, but Arise is just going to get, you know, first of all, Boar is sicked on him, which is never fun. And then Eknart, his goal right now is just dump the mana pool out, get the Queen of Pain very low, force out her regen, and Queen of Pain is, hopefully for her, grabbing some uh, tangos or a bottle. She does have tangos coming out to her, but you really never really want to be doing that as a mid lane hero ever. So it's the Skyrath Mage that's putting the pressure, putting the hurt to Arise, and with this mid lane matchup, this Beastmaster definitely does need the help. Beastmaster versus Queen of Pain is not fun for the Beastmaster. Yep, definitely. And what I'm curious about is is top like these the Sand King in that lane versus a PL. I mean the PL should in theory win unless there's some sandstorm spamming out coming out, but he's going for Caustic Finale, and that's yeah, after the chain 6.84, that's really, really interesting that build if you have a solo laning Shachlo. Uh, Sand King. So, give it another two levels, and let's see what's coming out. This build is actually only possible because of the fact that Skyrath Mage is over in the mid lane harassing the Queen of Bane. If there was a Skyrath Mage up here, if it was a 
dual lane for scary faces or a tri lane, then at this point in Caustic Finale would be doing nothing or close to nothing. It will not be doing very well. So the fact that he has it right now is going to make things a little bit more difficult for Quista. You can't really afford to get up that close to the creep wave. You have you know, a little bit of regen left, but you don't want to be throwing it away because the enemies are spending absolutely nothing in order to get that free harassment off. So this Sand King versus PL matchup, pretty darn good for the Sand King if the PL is left alone. And I don't expect that to be the case for the entirety of the game. Looks like the Scarath Mage is already, you know, he's already satisfied with what he did down in the mid lane then he'll move out but over towards mid Ramsey's gonna get hit with the void looking for an impale lineup oh, shadow is there as top. well there's our first blood Duh. shots though on the run Quista just needs one more lance there it is right in the back it's gonna be the fan oh, lancer drawing first blood, first blood. and shots though maybe yeah, getting a little bit too confident there up on top was there even a sentry drop there wasn't no this was this was pretty much him being silenced really really fast and then he dropped so low it was really just that one lance and I'm glad we just got it on camera yeah, I mean, that's the type of situation that you are going to be in if you're just a sand king in the off lane, uh, or solo lane rather, bottom lane. They're going to go against Gucci through everyone void on Shadow. He has a Rock Barrage in two seconds. They also have to worry about maybe another Impale coming up. Rock Barrage is going to go fully into Nico Baby, but now the Gyrocopter's in under his tower. He should be just fine. Spike through two. They caught Nico Baby and they know about it. They're going to go for Stoneman instead. They will kill him off at the trade of their own Gyrocopter. Okay. Ramsey's still A-OK -okay right now, so it's a one-for-one -one trade. Support for support, all things considered, pretty darn even there. But this is a 2v3 lane for Scary Faces. This should not be doing this well. Yeah, definitely, but the gyrocopter coming in there, I, yeah, it, it made it all complicated because level 1 rocket barrage, it's just so painful. Yeah, I did the math previously, but I don't actually remember. It was something like 400 plus damage with rocket barrage uh, at level 1 if it's just one guy, and pure evil is going to feel it right now. Rocket barrage is going to get fogged out a little bit. Now the field goes up, missile is down, but eh, though it will probably connect, there's nothing that they could actually do off of it, so... A lot of free damage onto pure evil, and that's the strength of Sport Gyrocopter. You mentioned in the draft that uh, Phantom Lancer gets active a lot later than the Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter can get active so early on that teams sometimes run him as a support, and that's what we're seeing right now. Just the threat of Rocket Barrage, and of course the threat of homing missiles going to be altering how Unknown approach this lane. And at the moment on the Sand King, he's really, really holding back for a good reason, because Scarab Mage, like the alone, that level 1 Ancient Seal, that's too dangerous for him, plus uh, they expect him to have some sort of vision, but at the moment, nobody has detection, so in theory, he would be fine on the lane if he gets his Sandstorm up. That way, he could easily at least scrap some farm. And if he doesn't want to do that, he always has a level 3 Sandstorm. You go into the jungle, start stacking that up. There aren't really enough heroes on the basically unknown side to be you know handling the lanes and stacking up the jungle so their jungle is not stacked at all which is potentially going to be a little bit difficult for Shotch though but he is getting a lot of experience this is a lot lot more of ex experience than we ordinarily see from Sand Kings who are usually in that lighter four or five position support role he will have an epicenter look pretty what he swiftly. does like I mean Sandstorm trying to get the neutral stab but with the Phantom Lance around the corner which means like they definitely get the experience shared and maybe even more, but now there's at least some rotation trying to stop that from happening. Uh, Stominin is here, Pure Evil is here, it's a level 3 on both of them. Shotch though only has a level 1 burrow strike, and the upside of going for a Sandstorm is that you can farm. The downside is that you won't be able to kill things ever, because level 1 burrow strike is such a bad skill. You need that to be level 3, ideally, before you really get things going, so... Yeah, he's going for a very passive build, and because of that, it will be difficult for Basically Unknown to actually do anything up towards top, but over towards so mid, maybe? Fast. No, Void on the bird. That bird is definitely dead, but they're not going to kill the Beastmaster. Yeah, and I mean, for the Night Soccer, it's definitely worth it. Like, oh, never mind, there's a Silence on a Disruptor. He can't really do anything, even without a Lance, to just go for it, but I think Scarif Mage, yes, he's spread, oh, experienced all the wrath, but Queen of Pain being caught up by the raw, easy kill, making that not a worthy trade. Queen of Pain... So close to getting the blink out, she was like mid animation, but Roar lasts for a ridiculously long amount of time, and Quista does do some pretty decent damage for a hero with no items. Uh, his natural base damage is pretty darn high, so Queen of Pain, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, getting that retaliation kill, making it so that it's just not a disruptor pickoff, is probably worth executing, but the levels from Scary Faces, the fact they actually had mana on the Beastmaster to cast it, helped them out in a huge way. 4 2 now in favor of the Scary Faces side. 
Yeah, and we have to see what else is happening. I mean, now that we have certain level 6 ultimates up, like the Nyx Assassin just popped level 6. The Beastmaster, we saw him already in action. Gyrocopter grabbing some more and more XP in the lane, which, mean, which means we're going to add that call down to the big fights. Uh, for Phantom Lancer, well, that doesn't really matter. But also, the Scarif Mage is pretty much on the same level as the Gyrocopter, which means in about two or three minutes, we have those mm -hmm. fights where it's really just about who stands in which AoE and who gets the first initiation, especially the Silence is out. And it's going to be pure madness and randomness. Yeah, and it's going to be a little bit worse for basically unknown. Keep in mind, this has been the first night time for you know a couple of minutes now. And Stominin's impact has been, let's say, limited to say the best, to say the least. So Stominin, when it's daytime, won't be able to actually start that chaos off as usually you only need, uh, you need nighttime to do it, or at least you need that level of darkness. But that's not going to be coming up for quite a while. So for basically unknown, it's going to be a lot harder for them to start fights off. Probably a random glimpse or random burrow strike is going to do it. And Shotsho is pretty darn close to his blink dagger, so maybe that could help out, but this is still not a safe place to be. Pure evil up towards top, slowed down by concussive. There's the lance as well. No real follow-up this time, because they know that they're going to be essentially diving a tier 1 tower. They will all bug out of there. Yeah, also a bit luck on the illusions. Like, if those illusions had diffuser blade or anything like that, maybe some more items, it actually did quite a ton of damage on a disruptor who couldn't really run away. But there's just too much going on at the moment. Like, basically, unknown have four people in that jungle at the moment, as well as the Queen of Pain in Reach. So I think the best thing is to go away. But they do the opposite. The Beastma is getting the stun, and now everything's just going YOLO. Well, Shacho gonna get silenced out. One illusion, not quite gonna kill him off. They're gonna focus instead on Diga Wave, but Sonic Wave through two. Gonna drop state very low. Nico Wave is gonna time lapse him. He's just fine. Now going towards Quista. Doppelgang, not quite to the low ground though. He gets screwed over, and now they know where the real one is. Somewhere in the top ground here. They're gonna kill him off with a scream of pain or something. The Sand King ultimately does go down. How the hell did he go down? Okay, looks like the Phantom um, Lancer illusion he, was enough. He went it, to the, it was I, very I think close, but DC'd. it's a one for three trade. I I'm, I'm seriously thinking that he DC'd or something because he just stood still he was not stunned or anything it was just that one illusion but that one illusion needed like three hits mm -hmm. on the sand king and he could have cast at sandstorm middle tower is under attack yeah or i, I just I walk saw him away like, with the illusion right on top of him like oh he's fine this is just a level one illusion or whatever apparently not this is, if you this go is really AFK, strange i have to say he just stood still like i don't know giving up on life sometimes man you just have that moment of clarity and you're like, life is not worth living. And Shotsho clearly just had that. That's, that's unfortunate because he was probably, well, he would have had like 18-ish, 100 gold. That would have been really close to his blink dagger. And he's going to have it eventually, but he could have uh, had it just a little bit sooner. Yep. Well, regardless, maybe he just had a luck spike. Who knows? We have the Phantom Lancer now. Rotating into the bottom lane there. I'm not really sure if that's a good situation as a disruptor to be in there Look at the next assassin and there he's coming all he needs is that one stun if it lands it's good, but it doesn't land Ramses gets caught in the kinetic field even with tower range there burst strike through from shots though Gonna pop the Nyx assassin Stominant also TPing in. I don't think he actually did anything there But uh, yeah, that field was pretty much as perfect as it gets not only trapping the Nyx assassin on the very edge But also trapping him in tower range so yeah, that's uh, this is the reason why we don't see Nick Assassin as, you know, a first pick premium hero, because that type of thing happens. It's very easy to miss your Impale. Yeah, especially the Nick Assassin. Um, I don't know, I, I think he could have done a, a better job, but let's see. At the moment, I'm also uh, like impressed by the PL's lack of uh, replication. It's it's pretty amazing. That like that Disruptor, for example, he just casted one lens and spawned five top illusions top within like a second or so. So, I, I don't know. This is pretty man. incredible. The more you practice on these RNG heroes, the more RNG you get. That's how it works. Oh, Apparently, so but look at this. The Sand King now. This is an awkward position there. Like, he gets... Oh my god. Well, he gets the Burrow Strike off. That's the important thing. Roar does go through it, so he is going to get hit. But since there's no follow, everyone was stunned. Pure Evil can take quite a bit of damage right now, but they really don't have that much else to chase with. Ramses does have his Impale, but you're not going to hit a Queen of Pain with that free hand. Shacho does get stunned up in the safety of his Tier 2 tower, and that was potentially really, really bad for Shacho, though. You don't really want to be walking in this area by yourself as honest, any hero. To be honest, the, the reason I didn't even say anything, that I was, I was actually speechless because he went into three visible heroes in the mid from behind through the tier one tower 
<laughs> I mean, he survived and everything, but given the fact that he stood still in the last fight, even though he was not supposed to die there, and now this YOLO go, I don't know if this was really just a, a bad pathing or an attempt to gank someone. I don't know. Even if there was a gank attempt, I don't think there was any chance to succeed, but maybe they just didn't see the other heroes, and I'm, I'm completely confused, but I'm, I was really speechless that he really walked through this. Maybe he thought that... Or it was... Uh, nighttime then, right? No, no, it wasn't. Uh, yes, it was nighttime then, so maybe he figured I can get through this like narrow path of darkness, but there was an observer ward there the entire time. Nico maybe up towards top, he's gonna get silenced, he's gonna try to go into Eknarth though. This Scarf Mage still has no armor, Roar in the Mystic Flare, Nico maybe taking so much damage! No time lapse, no chance, and he will be going down up on top lane. I don't know how the Sand King died. Looks like he probably just got Vendetta ganked down towards bottom, but it's a two for one in favor of Scary Faces, and their net worth on the PL is slowly but surely chugging along. Yeah, Shaho died here because he thought he was like alone with the Phantom Lancer, but Nyx Assassin came in and then, yeah, Sandstorm couldn't help him due to obvious, obvious carapace. And now Pure Evil, he's just standing still. You never really want to stand still, especially when you know there's an Nyx Assassin on the other end, but can't really do too much except for watch the tier 1 tower die. Mid lane tier 1 tower has previously been taken Dyer's by the scary faces side and well, Quista is not exactly the strongest pusher but they're going to run to pure evil with the bet with the uh, rockets. Gyrocopter is going to destroy that gyro and then one hit. This is a level 6 support gyrocopter who just wrecked the disruptor by himself. That's something only a, really only a support gyrocopter can do. Yep. Definitely, the damage output is just insane. This disruptor so far, except for this. Oh, never mind. Top. There is some action. They want to go on that beastmaster. There is no roar at the moment. There is the slow, and the rest I think it's just right. Like Shaklu coming in, kill secured. No, Weaver is gonna be the one getting it. Two heroes are coming in. However, Quista has an invis rune, reminiscent of Phantom Lancers of old, and they do see Nico Baby with the remnants of the Sentry Ward. But I don't know if they can actually do anything with it. There's the impale out of Vendetta. Nico Baby is going to get. Bailed out though by Shotcho, two man burrow strike, then the time lapse out, Nico is gonna get stunned up, and here comes Shadowy, already laid down, the missile has a call down as well, which is going to connect at least with the first missile on Nico Baby, he will Shikuchi away one more time, Shotcho has no more mana, he just grabbed his blink dagger though, and here comes Arise, Sonic Wave though will be dodged by Quista, now a two man impale as Dominant, and Arise locked down, here comes Scarf Mage as well, Silence onto the Night Stalker, he will get bailed out by the field, now blink out from Arise, they're trying to go onto Shadowy now with the lightning strike, not quite enough, Pure Evil is gonna be the one to die in the Mystic Flare. How did so many people escape that situation? I don't know, but somehow it's just a one for nil in favor of scary faces. Uh, like this, this fight looked like at least one team wipe, or like in summary, five people minimum going down. The truth is, really, just one went down. That was the pure, like the poor Dyer's disruptor who was actually responsible for, yeah, making Dyer's all these escapes tower. possible because of these this, these kinetic Radiant's kinetic fields are so amazing by him at the moment. And that was like so many clutch plays by so many players in that fight. Like the two-man impale turnaround from Ramses, the burrow strike from Shotcho to start things off there. Sonic Wave was a little bit off point from Arise. Tried to go for the Phantom Lancer, but Doppelgang has, I want to say, no cast time or very low cast time. So, yeah, it's pretty difficult to land that one. He could have landed a two-man Sonic Wave, but decided instead to just focus fire on one target. That's sometimes just the price you pay. So, yeah, it is somehow just only one person dying, but that's because everyone had all their skills and they were using those skills pretty darn effectively. Several heroes being hit by every single cast. Yeah, and what I'm now curious is when, when we're going to see some, some more action by the next assassin, because at the moment he doesn't use much of his vendetta to actually get around the map. He's, he's more content on farm. I don't know what he's going for at the moment. He just settled for the arcane bow as well. That's fine as it is. One more really, really, really important item is coming out, and that's, of course, by the Phantom Lancer. He went directly for the diffuser plates, and so far these fights... I don't know how he does it, but he has like tons of illusions on all those targets and now of course with the defusal plate, it's it's just crazy, the orb transfer to all these illusions doing additional damage. I think this is complete insanity, especially because now the mana the na mana burn even matters because you make heroes so oom in like three seconds, four seconds. It's gonna be a lot better since he clearly rolls lucky with these illusion procs so the fact that you could instantly swarm someone like Radiant's the disruptor the illusions attack. would kill him off Radiant's and if it doesn't then well they just destroy his mana pool and then disruptor is useless so if yeah, Phantom Lancer this is probably one of if not Radiant's my favorite builds on the PL just get the diffusal blade and then go kick some ass Dyer's and it looks like they're gonna do exactly that pushing attack. down the bottom lane at the same time staking things out in the area looking for someone else it's gonna be Ekdar to run shot though first just an observer ward drop there nothing else but on bottom lane, unknown, 
They do have a Blink Dagger on Sand King, but they don't have those epicenters. So this team fight, should it break out, is going to be a lot weaker for the BU side. And Quista, he's just fearlessly standing right next to the tower. This is, well, okay, Arise just used Scream of Pain. That didn't do anything. But Quista just working on this tower, he's really not that scared. Because they have the bird in the area. They have homing missile set up to zone out. This tower is dropping and Unknown are just going to sack it. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. They actually give away this tier two tower. Basically, I know they at the moment they're just not in the mood to farm. Like there was some split push attempt going on by the Weaver, but that's pretty much it. At the moment, like the the means to drive them just out of everything is is pretty amazing by SF set. So, well, let let's see where this one is going. I really thought Arise with with a dust on him, uh, with a smoke on him, is is gonna just jump in for maximum damage, but it just didn't happen. I'm pretty sure if they had Epicenter there, then they go in, but the fact that Sand King has well, gotten points in Burrow Strike, maxed out Sandstorm, not leaving at level 3, stuff like that, slowing down his damage potential. If that push happened right now, Unknown will be taking that fight, but uh, unfortunately it's not <laughs> happening right now for them. Maybe also waiting for Nighttime phase in the Night Stalker. He's grabbed the Hand of Midas, Stominant has been farming pretty quietly in the background. They're going to blink... Uh, Burrow Strike over on state. Sonic Wave through as well. Sandstorm will not get the kill. It'll be the Queen of Pain to do it. But Beastmaster, wrong place at the wrong time. Sasha getting roughed up by the Necrean at death. They see another target in Eggnard. They can't quite catch up to him. But yeah, Unknown, they're going to get a pick off and delay any sort of pushing plan for Scary Faces for a little while. But Nick maybe going to get into a fight with Quista. Bottle up is there. Dust on the Weaver, but Weaver is miles away. You can't catch up to that yeah. bug. And he can even if they commit to this, then really this dangerous. is committing directly into death. So yeah, they do the right thing going back. But Nyx Assassin is there. What they need is a nice opener. But Weaver, Weaver's still not going down. It's one more hit. Does he get it? anything off? No, he does not. And instead, poor Night Stalker is in the corner. And there he remains, just as a corpse. That, is, that was really greedy sticking around there. I think they could have just made an easy escape after they had a okayish little clash. Yeah, that was also really weird from Shotso once again. This is like the third or fourth time... We've seen Shotso do just stuff that makes you scratch your head. He burrow struck, or I guess he like burrow struck through this cliff area or something like that. Got up to the high ground with burrow strike, which is sometimes what you want to do if you're going to escape. But when you initiate like that, when you hit zero people in the process, burrow strike is uh, you know, not exactly a great skill. So BU maybe could have actually taken a fight there if Shotso used his burrow strike offensively or you know used it at all essentially. But instead, BU get a little bit too close with the Weaver. Luckily for the Weaver, though, he did grab his Lincoln Sphere right before he went down. So he will have that one created upon his respawn. And, well, ideally for him, he'll be blocking some Roars. I don't know how often that's going to happen, though. Yep, it's 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 pretty strange, but maybe Shaklo is is lagging. Or I don't know what's what's going on. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's it's just strange, and I hope I know he finds himself. We are 20 minutes in. Looking at the farm, like experience-wise, this is still a pretty close game. And when it comes to net worth, it's almost yeah dead even. We have to see if that smoke now is changing something because we have a smoke on the other side too. It's both teams pretty much just looking for a random target, but problem is there are no random targets. If you find each other. You go into a big fat fight. Well, Nico Baby did reveal himself from that smoke. No one else on the BU side did. So they're still hidden right now and they're going to look at the tier 1 tower. Unfortunately for them, there's no one to find. Unfortunately for Scary Faces, similarly, there is also no one to find up in the top lane jungle. They're all smoked up and they might make a rotation down towards bottom, but uh, it looks like they're going to lose a tower. Maybe give it up for free. It's only tier 1 at this stage, so it's okay for them to sacrifice it. And Stoneman, yeah, you can check out the trees. This tower will definitely fall, and uh, it'll just be for free as well. This trades, the split push, it's going to be there, but not to actually take down structures, just to get damage on. So for basically unknown, they can make a defense here. Shotcho can expect to be spotted out by a bird, and if he gets interrupted out of his Blink Dagger epicenter, well, not really a great skill without it. He's going to clear out the bird pure evil, so they know that they're working with a vision advantage right now, or at least at parity. But we're just looking for that one blink burrow strike, or roar, to start things off. Oh, but look at the Night Stalker. He's actually wrapping around, and he's going on the Sky of Mage, but who is silencing who? He was too late. He was just too late in casting, so they lose him already, and this is a bad start into this fight, I think, basically unknown. They just give it up right here. They already lost that tower, now the rockets are flying out, but... This was so hilarious, seeing the two heroes in the game that can actually, like, single target silence someone, standing in front of each other, and, well, one was earlier. This is like old western, like, how do you call it, dual style? Pew pew. Uh, Who pulls first? Yeah, I guess it's just a duel. I don't know, if there were three people, it would be a Mexican standoff, but there was only two people. 
Like it's just yeah. a standoff. But it was it was just hilarious. Like. Wow, <laughs> if, if he would have found the silence, then easy kill for him on the mm -hmm. Sky of Mage this way around. Nice Sokko went down, easy going, and that was of course, I don't know, I think he was supposed to like wrap around in this fight after there is an initiation around like top, but the problem is like his team didn't initiate and in the end he was just completely left on. That means easy going for SFZ because they have a kill and oh, they found someone. Or did they? There's a sentry ward up on the high ground, which Shops is going to get roared, impaled as well as called down. Static Storm is there to try to buy him some space, but it's not nearly enough. He will crater, and that's another aggressive play from Shacha. Now, pure evil. He's going to get spotted out. Ramses is on the hunt. Glimpse back on the Nyx Assassin. Can't quite get in there with the Vendetta hit, but Gussif will land. Yield goes up. Another urn charge should do this disruptor in from Shadowy. Slow but painful death for Disruptor, or I'm assuming painful, maybe not painful at all, but he will go down either way. It's two free kills for Scary Faces and BU. It just seems like they're not all on the same page. Like, you don't make that play as Sanking unless you know that your entire team's gonna go in and make that play, but oh. now it's gonna be a rise. See, I found out Chris is gonna swarm him with illusions, and PEL is gonna draw a free kill on Queen of Pain. Did you see his Unknown, they're falling apart. Yeah, they're falling apart. That's that's one story, obviously. I mean, while all this is going on, the PL was farming, easy going. The Weaver is also not achieving anything, like as in uh, split push whatsoever. He might even die if there's vision on that Skyrath Mage, uh, or on that next assassin. Blink stun that might kill him. But what I've really found hilarious is the man after Queen of Pain. Like that was just a lens. Uh, two illusions plus the PL doing one hit plus the mana burn of next assassin, and she barely had any mana to just blink out. So. <laughs> wow, like you really are in trouble against this kind of mana burn. Usually Queen of Pain is ordinarily just going to be a mana starved hero, like that's why you see null talismans on her, just casual null talismans, because she really does need some sort of uh, mana pool amplification in order to be effective in the fights, but yeah, she will also be drained out really, really quickly. It is also potentially going to get worse, or it's definitely going to get worse. Because the Nyx Assassin Mana Burn, it's only level 2, so you know you could level that one up a couple more times. Diffusal Blade is only level 1, you could upgrade that from Quista as well, but also the third source of Mana Burn, the Necro Units on State, they are now maxed out at level 3, so if he were to catch the Queen of Pain by himself, maybe with the Nyx Assassin, then between Mana Burn and the Necro Burn, there is going to be not much mana on the BU side to work with, and for someone like Weaver who needs that mana to survive, at least for right now in his time lapse before it becomes free, that can be crippling even to death. Stoneman's going to run to a whole bunch of heroes, no impale out of stun just yet, Randy's will whiff, burrow strike through on Stu from Sacho, now charging that epicenter, it's going to connect out to everyone with the sonic wave as well, no, he actually gets silenced out of it, yet they still get the one kill, and now they're going to go for Shadowy, Static Storm off to the side, going to try to force everyone out, Shadowy will be brought down by the Weaver, and it looks like State is going to TP out of there, Necro Unit's still on the front line, still causing some havoc. But BU, they finally get some initiation, as weird as it is, and they get a couple kills. Yeah, but this was more or less an accidental initiation. This was really just a nice stalker, just blindly running into a 4 mine smoke, but the stun failed, so the initiation completely crumbled, and yeah, they finally got something. That was interesting, I have to say. I really thought SFZ is, is just going to make a huge fight, because their smoke, I don't know, it, it should have killed that night stalker instantly. Yeah, but you have a Sand King who has a Blink Dagger and a lot of time to set up his Burrow Strike. That two-man was exactly what they needed to actually get o get away with that fight. If that was just a one-man Burrow Strike, maybe it goes a lot worse to BU, but uh, they don't even get the Epicenter off, which so far that has been, I believe, the first Epicenter that's been channeled in this game. And unfortunately for him, it just didn't last long enough, because once again, Ancient Seal comes out very, very, very quickly. That's the second time we've seen that, first time being the Night Stalker duel. Yep, and finally we see the Nyx Assassin roaming around. He is actually close to two targets he could easily kill. This is a Rice and a Night Stalker, but both of them are, yep, just back to the base. He was a tiny bit too late there, but I mean, hey, you got level two Vendetta, so you, I don't know, only have like about, what, 25 seconds between invisibility downtime at this point. Should be all fine. So just some more levels and he can permanently be invisible. Just find that one target. The Weaver. I'm really curious what we're going to see out, out of this Weaver. At the moment, Maelstrom picked up some more AoE, some more impact damage right there. But, um, well, as long as there's the PL on the lane, he, he can't really push. Look at the damage he did with all this, not being into fights, just trying to split push. He did like a third of the tier 2 tower. That's what he achieved so far. Well, he is forcing also Scary Faces to actually go up to the top lane, leaving the rest of the map free for his allies just to do a little bit of whatever they want. This Weaver is actually capable of split pushing really, really quickly, and it's Weaver. He will escape most of the time with time lapse and Shikuchi, so 
This may look like a bug, but I'm pretty sure it's just a rat in disguise. He's now going to jump right into the Roche Pit. Arise is a DD rune. I would love for Nico maybe to have that, but unfortunately, I think he had it in the bottle. They're going to trade the tier 2 up towards top for the Roshan, but they're not clearing Roshan fast enough. Scary faces, they're just going to keep on going. They should have a good idea of where BU are right now. Thing is, I don't really think they care because they can push so very swiftly. State has maxed out his attack speed aura, and unknown, they have to fall back right now. Their tower is dying very, very quickly. It's going to be pure evil to come back first. Sand King is going to arrive as well. Has an epicenter available, but they really need Nico Baby and or Arise. They're still in the Roche Pit right now, and their structures are dying back at home. Range Rax is now going to take quite a bit of damage. Arise going to Sonic Wave just to clear things out. And it looks like that will mostly stop it, but not completely. Range Rax is down. Melee Raxes should be surviving right now as Unknown are going to arrive. That Epicenter is going to do next nothing. State gets glimpsed right back into it, though. He's taking quite a bit of damage, but he's going to use most of the things he wanted to use. Ram's going to jump right in there with a Spike Carapace, which will stun pretty much everyone. They'll take out the Beastmaster at the cost of their own Range Raxes. Can Scary Faces fall back successfully? Nico Baby going to walk right into an Impale. No, he'll dodge it, albeit barely. He has the Aegis, though, so he's not going to die anytime soon, but still, Scary Faces walk right in, take range Raxes in exchange for an Aegis. Unknown needs something big to happen for themselves right now. I'm not really sure if that trade was really worth it, to be honest. I mean, the Meteorax, that would have been interesting for Roshan and would have said, okay, FFZ, you just had an amazing trade, because I don't think that Aegis is going to make too much of a difference, but um, this way, maybe basically Unknown just bought themselves with this kind of move the advantage for the next fights where they can actually capitalize on it but then again if you look at the map like all the tier 2 towers are still standing for FZ which means we yeah I, I don't even think after a good fight basically unknown can really just bash through so overall I think high ground is broken is breached I mean and yeah as I've said they're still good standing there I mean, we already went over how fast Weaver can clear out creep waves with the maelstrom completed he has I'm assuming a BKB in the works right now uh, with that mithril hammer but you know it's gonna be more damage for him a little bit more at least he can clear out top lane the, the super creeps of range not gonna be the most influential but hey scary faces probably weren't expecting to get that far like the tier two definitely the tier three maybe raxes you're not planning on that so the fact that they got that is huge and when you're in this type of situation whether or not it's worth it is going to be determined by how basically unknown use this Aegis. So they get into a full 5-on-5 five five fight if Niku Baby uses time lapse and Aegis, you know, ideally, then clearly it's going to be worth it for them. But it doesn't seem like BU actually have plans to do that right now. Stoman is running around dewarding. The rest of the team kind of thinking about going down towards the mid lane, but they are really scared right now as well they should be yep definitely um at the moment i've said they're like sticking together which is really interesting they expect some sort of i don't know maybe a smoke coming out by basically unknown but it's quite the opposite at the moment they reach really just, just farming pushing top out renewing some wards by being like yeah under protection of your entire team like rice is, is I don't know, <laughs> just even using the Sonic Wave just to clear out something. And instead, as I've said, they take the initiation and look at this. This There's there's no clip at the moment. They, in theory, they could just rush on that base, get a tier 3 tower so highly damaged before anyone is even up for a defense. But at the moment, they're just sticking around. Yeah, there's no need to go in. They're waiting for someone to show their face right now. They'll see the Weaver TP in. That's not exactly the target they want. State does have a Blink Dagger and a Roar, but you can't do that to the Weaver because he has a Lincoln Sphere. They were hoping for someone else, anyone else. They would have made initiation there, Aegis or not, but they walk in, get a little bit of free damage on the Tier 3 tower, pull everyone from BU back, and, you know, the fact that they pull them back is probably the most important thing because while BU are bottled up in their base, their Aegis is burning, and they are yeah. going to try to use it with the smoke, but I don't even know if they're going to find anyone. Well, the biggest problem was really that they just didn't know where the other heroes were, so they didn't want to like run into a trap. But talking about a trap, this smoke actually might change the balance of this game if they find some decent targets. It's only the Beastmaster, and there it is. He's already slowed, stunned, silenced, and... Oh my oh. god, even the ultimate kill secured. All right. He really wanted that he didn't, even, he didn't even get it though. It was Night Stalker to grab the last hit somehow. So <laughs> Sonic Wave, that was completely unnecessary. It costed him quite a bit of mana. Cooldown is almost irrelevant with the Aghanim Scepter, but it does cost quite a large chunk of mana there. Unknown get yeah. a kill. That's not quite good enough considering they lost range racks up towards top. They should still be itching for a fight or some sort of objective right now, but I don't really know if they could find it right now. Scary Faces, yeah, they're down without their Beastmaster, but top lane's pushing in. Fan Lancer is going to make mid lane push in as well. 
And bottom lane, well, it's pushing towards the Radiant, so maybe BU can find a fight right now, but it's going to be a little bit difficult because for them, the nighttime is wearing out. Yep, nighttime wearing out, that makes the scouting so much harder, almost impossible, because you're down to like the same vision as the enemy. Um, I'm, I'm also surprised, as I said, Nyx Assassin, I thought we are going to see him a lot more active. Um, also, the split pushing could come out a bit more aggressively, in my opinion, on Phantom Lancer, but he just went back. Uh, which means, yeah, they top, they have to defend. They actually said two, they sent two people there, so they don't even want to like remain in the mid, getting a kill. It's it's pretty interesting to see what what both teams do at the moment here. This is not not fully committed on either side. They're just waiting, potentially for the other guys just to make a mistake. It's also not farm optimizing because mostly they they stick together for a very very long time. You even see that in the experience on. Uh, basically unknown they lead by almost 10k experience so like as i've said they're they're nice standing so far in the game and their push it's all based on them sticking around together for a long time but then again they lose a lot of xp on that way and unknown's aegis pretty much did nothing for them weaver just had it time out so that trade now in total after we have seen the ultimate results from it definitely not worth it in the grand scheme of things for bu of course you know hindsight 2020 all of that but uh, it's pretty much Garyface is just waiting for this Phantom Lancer to get a little bit bigger. They do have a Gyrocopter who's pretty support oriented right now. Glimmer Cape Earn. You don't buy that on Core Gyrocopter, but if need be, he could actually go into a little bit of damage as well. BU, they're putting a lot of stock into Nico Baby, and he is farming pretty rapidly, but up against Phantom Lancer, it's really hard to say, Weaver, you know, just go ahead and carry this game. You got this. Yep, definitely. 33 minutes in, but almost a similar score on both sides, and we have such a like close standing on net worth. The experience I just mentioned is, is definitely heavily in favor for Unknown, but I don't think it even matters at this point, because we, we are at the point where everybody has almost their level 3 ultimates, and therefore at least the magnitude of ultimates is coming out. The Weaver is, is pretty much what carries the basically Unknown uh, experience. Most of the time he's like 3 levels ahead over the, the Phantom Lancer, but then again, yeah. As I've said, I think they should start slow sieging those towers. Might as well, you just put the Necro units on there, Radiant's put the Phantom Lancer illusions on there, a couple of illusions, and up Radiant towards top, Nico Baby, he's gonna take down a tier two, so he's Dyer's trying to make some sort of race happen. Attack. But eventually, it's gonna be scary faces to find some sort of opening, because someone on BU is gonna have to clear this Radiant's one out. Stoneman's gonna pop the darkness right now, but State is sticking Dyer's around with that attack speed aura, and look at the aura just do its work. Shot show, gonna burrow strike through, Ramsey gonna blink in, two man impale on them, call down in the Mystic Flare as well, both heroes dead in an instant. Can they find Beautiful. anyone else? Looks like the answer is no, but the answer doesn't have to be yes. Nico Baby still sticking around in the area. State looking for that roar. Very close to getting it off. That would have been the Weaver's death almost for sure. But instead with two heroes down, Sonic Wave, that's not going to do jack. Unknown, they get initiated upon, and they get initiated upon really, really hard. That's going to be one racks and a half in favor of Scaryface. Nico Baby going to walk right in, has a BKB. Will absorb a roar, it looks like, with that Lincoln Spear. Now they're going to charge in for the Gyrocopter, kill him off with the help of her eyes. He will be still taking pretty much no damage, going to charge forward, looking for this Beastmaster. And it looks like Noel instead go for Eknar. A couple hits, that'll kill him off. Quista, though, he's going to jump right in with the Mana Burn. Will it be enough to kill off Nico? Maybe it will be. They're going to continue on with this aggressive play. Stominin on his way out. Phantom Lancer, though, still pretty darn healthy. Despite that, Scary Faces, they've already taken out Raxes. They'll fall back, happy with their victory. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is such an even fight. As in, like, heroes, but, yeah, all the fighting happening after the Rex are down, like, I don't know, I, I really don't know what's the plan of basically unknown, like, not coming back with the with the Beaver in time, the PL was already coming into that tower, and I also love the way how SF set is doing it at the moment, like, they test, they send some units in on a T3 tower, see if someone is coming to defend, and then they're like, okay, nobody home, let's just have a party right here, and then they go for it, sure, on the way back, they... I know, when they try to retreat, they lose some heroes, but I mean, it's called Defense of the Ancients. And basically, I know they just can't defend their base. And that's what it comes down to. They will slowly lose lane after lane if they keep on going like this. That's what happens when you have scary faces with both the slow siege power from the Beastmaster and the Phantom Lancer, and the vision advantage with, well, I guess, the Beastmaster and the Phantom Lancer illusions. They'll see you coming, and it's just a matter of time at that point until someone finds some sort of initiation. That time, it was a blink impale from the Nick Sassin. Maybe next time it's going to be a blink roar from the Beastmaster, but 
no matter what, it's going to be basically unknown to be initiated upon. I don't see a situation where they get advantageous initiation. The one time we did see it, the two-man burst strike on the bottom lane, it worked out very well for BU because they actually had some sort of say of when the fight was going to start, but now with so many blink daggers and scary faces, with the vision advantage, with their pretty much better initiation to start things off, BU, they're once again bottled up in their base and shot show. I mean, he does have a BKB, which is really useful for this tanking, but I don't know if he's actually going to get a decent epicenter off, and at this point, I don't even know if it matters. He's going to burrow strike through onto Quista. Sonic Wave is there as well, but Quista takes no damage from it, pretty much. Graham's going to get silenced out, but Quista's going to jump right in. There's the roar onto a rise. Stackstorm goes up, but connect down to pretty much no one. Pure Evil taking quite a bit of damage in the back end. Should be dropping pretty soon, but Quista's taking no damage in the meantime. Nico Baby is dueling this PL, not doing a fantastic job. There's the epicenter from Shacho, did pretty much no damage. Now he's going to go down in an instant. Nico Baby also getting changed down. By the way, Raxes have been taken shadow is going to be on his way out in a body bag on the left side of that fight. Quista still pretty darn healthy, and it's a 3 for nil plus melee Raxes. They could slide over towards mid lane and look to end this game right now. Yeah, I don't even think there's there's much basically unknown can do. Like, there it is. It's it's the last push. There are some buybacks. It made me see something because the Disruptor has a pretty low cooldown on his respawn, but nope, I just don't see this one happening at the moment. Well, they're going to charge right in. At least Shadowy will. He doesn't give a damn. He's kill off, going to kill off Rise with the help of Vexnar at Silence. Quista doesn't have to concern himself with this fight. Just go for the structure. Stominant isn't a 1 versus 3. And as strong as Night Stalker is during nighttime, it's not that strong. They'll call GG. Scary Faces, slow and steady, wins the race for them. And really, just having initiation advantage, I think, really tipped the game in their favor. Yep. The better initiation, the better decisions, uh, push over... Objectives like Roshan were basically the unknown, put some emphasis on it, but also the fact that um, you, you said it earlier, you think that they're just not on the same page. There's like maybe miscommunication coming out on uh, basically unknown. That's really how it felt. Many times they were caught off. Also, some, some question marks above Shachlo's uh, head, um, but we didn't really find out what was the reason for him being there, for him standing still and just dying. Maybe it was really just lag whatsoever. But it really drew a whole picture on Unknown's performance here. It was really, really disappointed. And as I've said, yeah, more than deserved, uh, right. deserving to win here. Let's see. Game number two, maybe basically Unknown comes back, find their performance somehow for what they are known. Yeah, guys, Heflamoke just said it. This is a best of three, so game two will be coming up very shortly between Scary Faces Unknown. Don't go anywhere. I'm Mike Lewis. I've been joined by said Heflamoke, and we'll both be right back for game two.